Good morning and welcome to Christ Church's virtual Sunday morning worship. We all join in together with the words in white. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And so we pray together. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're going to sing our first hymn. It's This is Amazing Grace. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I That you would 
and so let us confess our sins. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. So may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading today is taken from the Gospel of St Luke. It's chapter 24 beginning to read at verse 13. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Here ends the reading. During this period of lockdown, there has been a tremendous increase in the use of social media which has been great because it's enabled lots of people to keep in contact with their families. In fact, after a few false starts, in our family, we are now regularly Zooming and FaceTiming grandparents, which is brilliant because as well as being able to hear them tell me that they're OK, I can actually see for myself and it gives me quite a deal of reassurance. But let's face it, no matter how good these communication tools are, they don't remove the need for physical contact. Being able to see my parents is wonderful, but what I really want to do is give them a hug. In fact, at the end of every conversation that we have, my dad always says to me, give everybody a hug from me. There have been lots of lovely photos on social media of newborn babies being introduced to their grandparents through a window 
or of NHS workers who have had to separate themselves from their children, again waving to them through windows. I have to confess that these images have brought tears to my eyes during these dark days. In our reading today, the two disciples were walking towards Emmaus on the evening of what we now know as Easter Day. Only three days earlier, they had endured the terror and devastation of the crucifixion, when all of a sudden they are joined by Jesus, but they don't realise it's Jesus. It says in our reading that their eyes were literally held back from realising who he was. Now, we don't know what stopped them from seeing Jesus. It could have been God's work in stopping them, or maybe they were just so overcome with grief and so wrapped up in the horrific events of the past few days that they were too traumatised to see who he was. And let's face it, they weren't expecting it to be Jesus. But whatever the reason, they didn't realise that God was walking next to them. And yet Jesus doesn't make fun of them. He speaks to them with joy but with gentleness, explaining that everything that they have learnt throughout their lives about God and about the coming Messiah points to the fact that Jesus had to die on the cross. Jesus met them where they were, in the midst of all their confusion and emotions, and gently led them to a more fuller understanding of who he is. Jesus continues to walk alongside us every day, whether we are aware of his presence or not. He gently comes into our lives and waits for us to recognise him. Jesus doesn't force himself upon us. He doesn't demand that we should worship him. Worship of Jesus is a choice. Instead, Jesus waits for us to recognise his presence among us. He walks alongside us during our daily lives and waits for us to see him. A little bit like my being able to speak with my parents on social media, which is lovely, but quite frankly, it's not enough. What I actually want to do is see them in person and hug them. God also doesn't just want lip service. He doesn't want us to say that we believe, proclaim that we believe maybe, but actually not have a relationship with him. God doesn't want a distance relationship on Zoom. God wants to take us in his arms and tell us how much he loves us. And God's waiting. He's walking alongside us during these difficult times and he's waiting for us to acknowledge him, for us to accept his embrace and to us to love him back. Amen. So let us declare our belief. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. And so let us bow our heads for our prayers of intercession. Lord, help us to heed you if we hear your call to take action or to speak out. Too often we do our will and seek your approval as an afterthought or turn to you if things go wrong. Lord, deepen our awareness, gracious God, of life as a partnership between you and your creation from which we benefit. You give us our daily bread through your Son. May we cast our nets wide whenever you need us to act for you in bringing people to the one true path. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, inspire your church to put your Son at the centre of our lives. We give thanks for all the pastoral sensitivity that our church leaders show and ask that they will be strengthened in their tough love for us through sometimes difficult messages of how we need to turn our lives around. Lord, surround our own churches with your love and give us the confidence to take the right steps to bring your kingdom closer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for the war against the coronavirus. Father, we pray that you would halt the spread of the virus in our community, in our country and across the world. Lord, we thank you for those who are leading our country, for their skill and wisdom, and we pray that you would help them to work to seek the common good. Lord, help each one of us to 
understand how we can do our part to halt the spread of this disease. And Father God, we pray especially today for those who have caught the disease and are struggling with illness. And we pray especially for those who have died. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, in our own communities, we pray for those who are hurting at the moment. Lord, we pray for those who are known to us, who are struggling with illness of any kind. We pray for those who are struggling with family relationships and family breakdown. We pray for those who are struggling financially at this present time. And Lord, we pray for those whose plight is known only to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, Father, we pray for the souls of those who have departed this life, knowing that they are at peace with you. We pray that those who grieve would understand that peace which the world cannot give as they show their love and share their memories. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. So go in the peace of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And so we sing our final hymn, To God Be the Glory. <laughs> 